Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. The Islamist Hamas organization, which marked this month a decade since it took over the Gaza Strip by force from Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah movement, an anniversary that also marks the bitter rivalry between the two Palestinian factions, the group is now facing new challenges that may weaken its prospects of controlling the Palestinian enclave for much longer. To further discuss this topic, I'm joined here in the studio by Professor Hillel Frisch, who is a senior researcher at Bessa Center at Bar Ilan University. Welcome. Hi. I'd like also to welcome our TV7 analyst, Mr. Amir Oren, and Mr. Elior Levy, a journalist at Israel's Yedio, uh, Ynet News Agency and Yadio Tachonot Daily. Hi. And Dr. Eran Lerman, who is a senior research associate at the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies and a lecturer at Shalem College. Welcome. Yeah. Mr. Oren, give us a broader understanding of the current also crisis in the Gaza Strip and the various implications pertaining to the situation. Let me add another dimension to the context uh, which you have already uh, pictured. Um, time flies and many <coughs> events are happening, but uh, you probably remember that uh, a week or so ago, uh, last week, the Blues Brothers of the Trump administration, Jared Kushner and Jason Greenblatt, have visited the area in order to find uh, whether there are conditions uh, which are ripe enough for negotiations. And one of the conditions which they were looking for is unity in the Palestinian community. They were trying to find whether there is any ground for a deal, before the big deal between Israel and the Palestinians, a deal between Fatah or the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. And one can guess, even though uh, the, uh, the results are not uh, uh, known yet, that uh, they will not have been successful because it is very difficult for Mahmoud Abbas and for the new leadership of uh, Hamas, the uh, Yahya Sinwars and the Ismail Hanias of uh, Hamas to get together and find a formula whereby they will end their split, their decade-old split. Professor Frisch, when we're talking about the current situation in the Gaza Strip, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has for quite some time now tried to reinsert his control over this enclave. Nevertheless, uh, he has failed on several occasions and now is trying to do that within new circumstances where Hamas's backing with Qatar is uh, failing due to the isolation of Doha, uh, as well as uh, Iranian uh, support that has, even though they claim that they have uh, restarted uh, their funding of the Islamist organization, has yet to arrive in the Palestinian enclave. How do you see Hamas actually maneuver in this uh, new situation where this crisis is actually pushing it to the corner? Basically, um, the relationship between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas is very similar to the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Saudi Arabia has the money, Iran has the military, <clears throat> the military power. It's the same thing. It's the same thing in, in between the Palestinian Authority, which is backed more or less by the moderate Sunni um, states, and Hamas. Um, the Palestinian Authority has the money. Four four point three billion dollars of um, budget uh, annual budget, and uh, Hamas might have a hundred million dollars. So, and the Palestinian Authority is hoping to starve the Hamas to death. I don't think that they're going to be very successful for the simple reason that Hamas can starve its own pop population to get the minimum to pay at least half the salaries of the fifty thousand employees that it hired, 30,000 of them are military people or security people, 20,000 are mostly teachers who teach jihadism in, in, in the school system. Um, as long as they pay 50% of, of, the, of those salaries, which is what they've been doing in the last three years, they're going to remain in power and it's going to be very difficult to unseat them financially. Dr. Lehrman? Well, uh, the whole fantasy about uh, unification always crushes against one basic reality. You can put together a government of uh, some Hamas and some Fatah or, or bureaucrats or technocrats, but at the end of the day, there's one question. One gun or two guns. Right. The idea that somehow Sinwar and Def are going to submit militarily to the authority of Majid Faraj in Ramallah 
is uh, too ridiculous for words for people who believe that they have acquitted themselves well in three rounds of fighting with Israel and have no intention of accepting that kind of authority. And of course, Majid Faraj would never accept a situation where he is nominally in charge of uh, Hamas, but the command structure of Hamas uh, is totally independent on the ground. So unless there is a way down the road to completely bring Hamas to its knees and make its commanders submit to the authority of Ramallah, it's simply not going to happen. It's going to be all kinds of meaningless maneuvers, the, the sort of which we've seen before, but ultimately the decision is very much uh, focused on this military dimension, which is not going to change. Uh, Mr. Levy, when we're talking about the options in front of Hamas, currently Hamas uh, is with its back against a wall. It doesn't have the support that it usually has from Qatar and uh, the other countries in the region seem to distance themselves from this organization. Nevertheless, now we see more and more uh, interest by Egypt to put it in uh, an ultimatum, if you will, uh, if it complies to this ultimatum of security-related uh, demands, it will then in turn uh, provide it with humanitarian aid and as well fuel for its uh, electricity produce. Nevertheless, uh, the uh, administration in Cairo is also supporting the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and has been very vocal about that. How does that actually work? Well, there is a tension between the uh, PA and Egypt these days because Egypt is trying to get close to Hamas uh, from its interest. There is no love between uh, Hamas and uh, Egypt, okay? It's all a question of interest. Um, you see ISIS in, uh, in uh, Sinai, okay? And Egypt want the help of Hamas to provide, uh, uh, Hamas provide help to ISIS for a few years now. Egypt want to stop it, okay? And they have this uh, uh, option to give uh, Hamas the open of Rafah crossing, for instance, fuel, uh, electricity to uh, uh, make them, okay, stop the, the, the help to ISIS. Now, when Egypt close, get close to Hamas, then uh, uh, the PA got uh, angry, pissed off uh, with Egypt, right? And uh, there is a tension, okay? Mm -hmm. All the time there is a tension, balanced tension between Egypt, Hamas, and the PA. Mm -hmm. Mr. Olin, when we're looking at the Palestinians, when I look on the whole <clears throat> uh, dynamic of the various factions, of the various rivalries, it seems like they are playing as pawns in a game of the Arab world, where each country uses them for their own leverage, for their own interest, and eventually they uh, produce some kind of solutions that aren't really bringing about a true solution in order to uh, put their standing better in the regional spectrum. Is this so, or is it more dynamic to that extent? Well, it's definitely one way uh, to look at it, and uh, it has been uh, absolutely true until 1967. Uh, as long as uh, the West Bank of Jordan was under the Hashemite Kingdom and uh, Gaza was under military administration for Egypt, it was never annexed the way the West Bank was, uh, you are absolutely right. However, um, since the uh, territories came under Israeli occupation or administration, it has changed, especially after the Oslo process started. The problem was that the uh, Palestine Liberation Organization has been designated the representative organization of the Palestinian people when Prime Minister Rabin believed that it could impose its will on all the other factions, including Hamas. This has turned out uh, to be less than optimal, as the Americans uh, uh, would put it. Now, the question is, can Hamas change not only its charter, but its real policy and recognize the Oslo agreements, which established the Palestinian Authority, recognize the ability of Israel to survive and to negotiate with it, and then they could have uh, a, a delegation to uh, uh, have some dialogue with Israel. But if, if one ties uh, into what uh, Dr. Lerman said regarding uh, uh, one gun, one authority, there are other uh, scenarios. In Saudi Arabia, you have the military and you have the National Guard under competing authorities. Of course, eventually you have the king. On the other hand, 
what you have in Lebanon is Hezbollah and you have the national army. One may say that Hezbollah has already encompassed the uh, national army and is now the authority. This could happen in the <coughs> Palestinian community too, if Hamas takes over. But eventually what we see in Hamas too is that the military wing takes its order and is subordinate to the political echelon. So if the political echelon of the Hamas, the Shura, or whoever uh, calls the, the shots there, uh, gets some agreement with the political echelon of the Palestinian Authority, some arrangement can be uh, found. Mm. Professor Frisch, when we're talking about the Palestinian <coughs> Authority or uh, uh, the Fatah movement, which is uh, the party of President Mahmoud Abbas, we see a very strong organization with a lot of heritage. Nevertheless, when we're talking about the executive uh, uh, capabilities in order to truly execute on the ground, it's very much limited, also in the West Bank as well as in the Gaza Strip. Nevertheless, now when Hamas is with its back towards the wall, would you see Hamas trying to shift the violence from the Gaza Strip towards the West Bank and try to take over the West Bank as well? They try it all the time. <laughs> I mean, this, there's a, basically a civil war between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. It's a civil war that Europeans know back in history. And it's a civil war that many third world states know between a religious fanatic movement and a much more secular nationalist movement. It's over the identity, uh, over Palestinian identity. So they're not pawns. They, they are part of the regional conflict between Iran and, and, and the moderate states. But the basic, the basic tension is a real tension between a theocratic movement and a more secular and a more secular movement. Um, now, Hamas, I, I, I could just give, give you the figures. Israel, uh, Israel arrests 6,900 people a year. That's 12 times more than, than Britain, um, terrorists, uh, home, home uh, terrorists at, in, in, in Britain itself. The Palestinian Authority, 1,500 more. This means that the Hamas, and it's mostly Hamas and Islamic Jihad, this means that the swamp is, to, is tremendous. It means that, th that the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank is threatened, and it means that the Palestinian Authority only exists because of Israeli bayonets. Wilman? <coughs> I think they know that. Uh, I think but Hamas has proven to be better organized, more effective, the balance has changed somewhat in the last few years because under Farage, the Palestinian Authority is uh, more efficient. But I think they are, they are themselves quite acutely aware that without the level of coordination and cooperation with the IDF on a daily basis, uh, they could face very uh, serious consequences. Uh, also so pertaining to their uh, uh, the to EU COP organization, which is also providing them with well, security uh, training and so on. With, or all, is that with all due respect, even to the American training of the Dayton, uh, what the so-called Dayton forces, forces, forces. etc., I think there's there's a limit to their efficiency. It's not at the low level that we faced in the past with. Uh, like 12 different Palestinian <coughs> security organizations in Dakhlan and Rajub and all of them busy basically spying on each other and, and neutralizing each other. Um, this is a far more efficient proposition. But precisely because they are more professional and more efficient, they are also more acutely aware of their limitations. Um, therefore, uh, it, uh, you saw this uh, in, uh, for example, in, 20, in, in, in 2014, there was cooperation between the Israeli and Palestinian security forces. This was one of the reasons that tensions uh, with Hamas kept rising. It's not going to change. Uh, let me put it in a euphemistic language. Um, I think the Palestinian security forces today have a gravitational motivation uh, to ensure that Hamas doesn't take over by which I mean that it is not a very pleasant business if you get thrown from the 16th floor, as happened in Gaza in two, uh, 10 years ago when Hamas took over and, and murdered, brutally murdered, um, Fatah supporters. It's a zero-sum game. Mr. Levy? Well, <clears throat> there is another player that we have to uh, look for, which is uh, Muhammad Dakhlan, which was mentioned here in, the, in, the, in this panel. 
Uh, Muhammad Dahlan, okay, sits in the Gulf and trying to uh, to maneuver between uh, his supporters in Gaza and in the West Bank. Now he needs Hamas uh, 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 now more than ever, okay, because he was exiled from the West Bank. And nowadays, and you see it uh, in these days, that uh, Dahlan is trying to uh, uh, resolve, uh, to solve, I'm sorry, to solve this uh, energy crisis in Gaza Strip, okay, with the Egyptian. He wants to look like the man who uh, 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 support and helped and did all he can uh, to help the Gazan people who hates now uh, Abu Mazen because they see that Abu Mazen has this engagement plan uh, from uh, uh, the West, uh, between the PA and uh, Hamas from Gaza. And you see that uh, Dahlan is getting inside uh, this uh, uh, corner, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Um, regarding the, the um, combat uh, coefficiency of the uh, two uh, sides, obviously, even though uh, one may uh, count the uh, PA uh, forces as nine battalions or nine regimental headquarters with uh, various battalion-sized forces, while Hamas has uh, six brigades plus various uh, elite units, Hamas um, has much more experience in combat. It has fought Israel on the ground twice within the, the last uh, decade. The other, the third time was only uh, from the air and artillery. And uh, the Palestinian Authority has zero experience in, uh, in modern law enforcement and security service operations. They are indeed effective in what they are doing, but they are going to be no match for the uh, organized uh, uh, forces uh, of Hamas. The, the other dimension is the uh, battle for succession of Mahmoud Abbas. Mahmoud Abbas is quite old. He is not uh, the uh, most healthy of, uh, of uh, 80 plus uh, year old persons. And um, Khaled Marshall, who has resigned or retired from his post as the overall chief of Hamas, leaving the post vacant for Ismail Haniya, who comes from Gaza. Uh, Khaled Marshall wants to succeed Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, we, we could see a silent coup within the Palestinian community whereby the Hamas political leader becomes the political leader of the PA, and this will will uh, uh, throw the entire diplomatic process into disarray. But because Hamas has to enter the PLO for this sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's very unlikely because neither the Israelis or the Americans are going to are going to allow that. But I'd like to get back to the Khlan. The only thing that the Khlan can do, first of all, he's remembered for his failure. He's remembered for the takeover of, uh, of uh, the Hamas takeover of Gaza, and he was the chief security officer, and he failed to to prevent it. And no one forgets, and no one forgets that. So the, his intervention can only weaken the Palestinian Authority in the face of uh, in the in the face of Hamas. Hamas. And I would I would agree with uh, Amir that the leadership of the Hamas is in their fifties, and the leadership. Fatah is in their 70s and 80s, and that does make a difference. Dr. Lehmann? Well, but still, I think most Palestinians, if they actually have a choice, mm. live under Fatah in the West Bank rather than under Hamas in Gaza for a whole range of reasons. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the decisive element is going to be the level of sophistication and determination uh, in Cairo. How are the Egyptians going to play the game? Because Hamas... Geography forces them to be dependent ultimately on Egyptian goodwill. Uh, they cannot depend on Israeli goodwill. They cannot expect it. We have been uh, uh, willing to help in the, at the humanitarian level. We were uh, willing to let Qatar uh, play the chief financial officer for Gaza, but not never the chief executive officer for the Gaza situation. That has to remain in the hands of Egypt. Now, in the past. In the early month, uh, I mean, uh, see, the crisis of 14 came when Sisi was very relatively fresh in power as president, and he handled this very, very brutally. His position uh, towards Hamas 
was uh, almost, I would say, hard, uh, his line was harder than ours. Which is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, which because is perceived he saw them as part of the enemy as a terrorist that he organization. just destroyed yeah. in the battle of, uh, of uh, Rabah al Dawir. Right. Uh, by now, the Egyptians have learned to play the game in a much more sophisticated way. I think uh, they uh, gave uh, uh, Mr. Sanwa an education in uh, modern, regional, realistic relations of power. <clears throat> and I understand that he's already submitted mm -hmm. to Egyptian pressure in the sense that uh, aid to the um, population will come through Egypt backed by Qatar's rivals in the Gulf. And so Hamas has been forced under the, in, in the scope of the Qatari, in the context of the Qatari crisis, to submit to the will of the Saudi and Egyptian camp, which is, of course, also Israel's interest. Um, it, it tells us that they are certainly not in a position to play challenges mm -hmm. at, Mr. This, at this point. And you see again that uh, the Hamas is not trying to renew the relations with uh, Iran and uh, Hezbollah. You saw that uh, uh, Musa Abu Marzouk was in Lebanon recently. He probably met uh, Hassan Nasrallah, okay, uh, Hezbollah leaders. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, uh, they say that they, the Ismail Aniya, the Hamas leader now, okay, who replaced Khaled Mashal, is going to be in Tehran. Now, this is a very big issue for Hamas because since the uh, Syrian uh, civil war, okay, there is a total disengagement between Tehran and Gaza and also between Hezbollah and Gaza. And it means in military uh, mm -hmm. uh, supplies and everything. And now you see that the Sinwar camp, okay, is trying to renew the relation with uh, Iran, Egypt. Mm -hmm. right? uh, Mr. Owen, I'd like to touch base on that. Uh, following the meeting, they have also had some discussions and there have been, uh, been plenty of reports about Iranian interest in establishing three different fronts, the Syrian front, the uh, Lebanese front, and uh, the front of the Gaza Strip in a potential war against the state of Israel. Do you believe that Hamas now, with its back against the wall uh, pertaining to the situation with Qatar and its uh, renewed relations, so to speak, with uh, uh, Egypt or its reliance on Egyptian uh, humanitarian aid and so on, will it be able to comply to Iranian pressures on the matter? Not likely. Um, the, um, the age of trying to play one power against the other is practically over. You may remember that uh, Yasser Arafat, uh, mm. some 15 or 17 years ago, tried to get support from Saddam Hussein. Uh, when, uh, when terror <coughs> um, perpetrators uh, had the same uh, subsidies or their families that are being talked about now regarding the Palestinian Authority. Now, for Iran, uh, it does, of course, uh, uh, sound reasonable uh, to try and play Hamas as well as Hezbollah against Israel. But if you look at it from the Hamas point of view, they now have responsibility and accountability towards the population. It is no longer just an ideological movement. Now, um, Professor Frisch earlier mentioned the conflict between um, religious movements and national secular ones. From the Israeli point of view, uh, there was a time some 25, 30 years ago when Hamas looked more promising than Fatah because Hamas, while ideologically rigid, looked tactically flexible, which means that everybody knew that it will never agree to Israel's existence in principle, but it um, had no rush. It could have uh, reached some practical arrangements with Israel, while Fatah could be flexible on borders and other issues, um, but would also close the accounts, which is probably the most important Israeli demand. Once and for all, the conflict is going to be over. So if Hamas does not want to close the account, it has no way of compromising with Israel, and therefore neither can it compromise with the Palestinian Authority. Well, we're uh, pleased once Just, just to mention on the Iranian question, uh, that there is a wild card in this game. The Iranians have a proxy in Gaza. Palestinian Islamic Jihad, unlike Hamas, I used to say it's a different proposition. Hamas, literally speaking, Hamas works with the Iranians, pitch, mm -hmm. 
works for the Iranians. It is essentially an Iranian-controlled proxy. Hamas has never been bold enough to demilitarize, to, to defang mm. uh, the Islamic Jihad and take their weapons away. So and, and as, as a result, the Iranians can always uh, create a situation where Pidge will provoke Israel and Hamas will be hit. Mm -hmm. And that requires uh, any leader of Hamas to maneuver very carefully in Gaza. Well, we're drawing near to the program, so I'd like to give each and every one of you the opportunity to have uh, uh, and uh, remark. Uh, Professor Fish, we'll start okay. with you. Now's the time. Hamas is weak. Israel has to demand to dismantle, disarm Hamas, leaving Hamas power intact in, 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 in um, Gaza because we want <coughs> to divide the enemy. Um, but it's now time because Hamas knows that if there's another round, of, of, of war, the population might kill them in the streets. Mm. Mr. Levy? Uh, I think that uh, Abu Mazen fell in love with his uh, disengagement plan uh, from uh, Gaza. I think that he will go on with it, and uh, not only because of uh, Hamas, but because he sees uh, Muhammad Dahlan getting in this uh, arena. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lerman? Well, I think that for us right now, the most important tool is close coordination with the other members, and Israel is a member of what I call the camp of stability, particularly the Saudis and the UAE, uh, as fi uh, f financially supporting the situation, and the Egyptians being in the decisive position, to basically take Hamas down peg after peg. One day, they will wake up in the streets of Gaza and they will realize that there's nothing to show. Mm for those years of Hamas control. And it is a better way of getting rid of them than anything violent that would be, you know, that would make them into heroes. Mr. Owen? Uh, there are almost uh, two million Palestinians, uh, both natives and uh, refugees, uh, refugees who came over uh, almost 70 years ago, crowded into this small strip of land, uh, the Gaza Strip. Uh, you remember that during the Vietnam War, there were slogans regarding uh, putting North Vietnam back into the Stone Age. Gaza is almost back in the Stone Age, plus a couple of hours of electricity a day. And as was said here, Hamas has nothing to show uh, to the population. Time is on Israel's side because the obstacle being built against the tunnels is uh, uh, getting a lot of pace and Hamas knows that it is in a weak position. Now is the time for them to make some sort of a deal, even though it will not be the ultimate deal. What are the prospects of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas actually asserting his control back on the Gaza Strip? He has not been very assertive, but they will try to get some arrangement through President Sisi. Well, this is all the time that we have for today, so I'd like to thank Professor Hilal Frisch and Mr. Amir Oren for coming here, as well as Mr. Elior Levy and Dr. Ran Lerman for coming here as well. And I'd like to thank our viewers as well. And we we will see you next time. TV7 Israel's mission is to give you, our viewers, truthful information, which in effect will give you a chance to really understand what is happening in Israel and its region. If you are blessed by our programs and believe our mission to be important, we urge you to support us and become a voice for Israel. You can support us by going to our website at tv7israelnews.com. This program was made possible through your donations.